Uh, welcome to EPAR Trade Live. Uh, the webinar today is Building the Perfect Oil, How Nanotechnology is Revolutionizing Performance Engine. Uh, we appreciate the fact that we have here Kyle Fisher with Hot Shot Secret, Aaron Darnell, Hot Shot Secret, and LaVon Miller from a really interesting company, uh, Firepunk Diesel, and we'll get more into Firepunk Diesel as we get along. Uh, I'm your host, John Kilroy. I'm Chief of Content and Audience Development for EPAR Trade. And before we get going, uh, just a brief description of what we're doing at EPAR Trade. Uh, basically, we're creating an online strategy for the racing industry as a whole. With the internet, there's no borders, so it's really uh, the racing industry worldwide, global. Um, uh, EPARTrade.com is where you go uh, to, uh, we have smart sourcing technology, so we can source racing products, racing suppliers, and it's just very easy, very convenient, no charge to users. Uh, just go online and, and start plunking around, and, and it's amazing how much you can find with just a few minutes, a big, uh, complete set of solutions uh, to your challenge. So go to epartrade.com to uh, source suppliers. You can contact them online. About 25,000 racing organizations uh, would digitize the racing uh, business and put it online for you. And then we do these EPAR Trade live webinars, which are really uh, fun and informative and just uh, great guest speakers sharing their insights and strategies and, and, and technical and business. And uh, it's worked out to be a, a real success and very popular. So we're glad to have you all in the audience uh, join us. And then the final thing is <clears throat> the, the racing industry shows were canceled this year due to the pandemic. Uh, we had the resources and we were positioned perfectly to kind of step in and provide a safe alternative where, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to be there in person and just see each other and talk to each other in person, but now it's not the year for that. So we're providing a trade show experience um, online, November 30th through December 4th. We're gonna provide uh, 55 hours of content uh, such as this, uh, so webinars. And then uh, also when you wanna go for 2021 new product introductions, go to epartrade.com that week. And we have hundreds of companies uh, signed up to show you what they have that's new. Um, and then there's just one Zoom login to have access for all of the content. So um, you, you guys who own the shop or run the race team, uh, go uh, to epartrade.com and it's very easy to find it and just sign up. We, we want you to sign up today versus the five minutes before it all starts. <clears throat> so sign up. Registration is pouring in. And so evolved into a, a really significant industry event. So uh, tell your friends and spread the word. Uh, working with racer.com, uh, some, some of the industry leaders, the speakers, Roger Penske, uh, Bobby Rehal. Chip Ganassi, Brian Herda, USAC's Kevin Miller, Formula D's uh, Jim Lau, uh, British Touring Car Championship, Alan Gao, SCCA's Michael Cobb, IMSA's John Duna, Scores Jim Ryan, and go on and on with the industry leaders who felt we do need to have this annual coming together and sharing uh, insights and information and strategies and what's new. And so they're on board and, and they'll be part of uh, what will be uh, showing off that week. Race Engine Builders from John Cosby to Stefan Papadakis. Uh, subject matter for technical webinars, suspens suspension springs, turbos, valves, pistons, advanced materials, race car simulation, shipping logistics, and, and, and digital marketing. So there's quite a menu <clears throat> for me to choose from. And if you don't stay tuned all 55 hours, kind of like 24-hour TV for the racing industry, you're going to find several that you're going to want to watch. And then have the guys in the shop watch stuff too and, and, and use it as a training tool. Again, registration is free. Uh, so uh, check it out and get your registration today. Uh, and quick housekeeping notes for today. <clears throat> All the attendees are, are muted and they aren't on video, just so we don't have any distractions. And then uh, we want your questions. So uh, we know we have a very sophisticated audience and not just a domestic US audience, but could be in Europe, Australia, other places. And you can ask very sophisticated uh, questions to these guys. We have Aaron as a technical director and uh, LaVon knows everything as well. And Kyle does the marketing. And, and, and so we can answer any of your questions. Uh, at the bottom of the Zoom screen, there's a chat option. So go on chat, type in your questions and I'll be keeping track of them and I'll put it to our panel. <clears throat> and then we're recording it. And when it's all over, uh, those of you in attendance will send you a password so you can come back and, and watch the recording of it. 
or you can share it and send it off to people and say, you, you got to watch this. It's really worth watching. So now when we get to our speakers, uh, first of all, the company, Hotshot Secret, has over 35 high-performance, specially formulated additive products and specialty oils. Um, their strength is in diesel-powered vehicles, but they have uh, products for gas-powered vehicles as well. Manufactured by Lubrication Specialties, Inc. And I, I love to see uh, new products and brands come into the racing market with real creativity as well as hard work and some clear planning and real aggressiveness in promotion. Uh, I think it's a tradition that goes back to the beginning of uh, the racing industry. And you go back to Ed Iskandarian and Iski Cams, right, at the beginning of time for the racing business. And he had the expertise in the camshafts, but Mr. Iskandarian brought a personality behind the brand. And it's just fun to see, and it's welcome. And, and Hotshot Secrets is doing a great job. Um, so... Uh, uh, Kyle Fisher is uh, Director of Branding and Promotions. He joined LSI in 2017 as Director of Marketing, followed by promotion to Director of Sales. So now he's in charge of Branding and Promotions. Uh, close to 20 years of experience in marketing, sales, and management for Kyle. Uh, Self-professed gearhead with a passion for anything car-related. He spends his free time drag racing, attending uh, car club events, and earned his uh, BS degree in Marketing Administration from Franklin University in Ohio. Aaron uh, Darnell is the technical director for Hotshot Secret. Vaughn Miller from Firepunk Diesel. Uh, the company can handle all your performance diesel needs. Uh, basic mods to the extreme, built transmissions, twin turbos, engine conversions, total complete builds. And, and you, you, you gotta go on to uh, the website for Firepunk Diesel and just review it. And, and, and go to the gallery and just some real beastly machines that uh, Levon's making there. So and we'll find out more about Levon uh, later. I know a lot of people in the audience already know Levon, but we'll, we'll find out more later. So we, we've got a great panel, a great subject matter in terms of uh, oils and lubricants. And, and Kyle, we'll just turn it over to you and start at the beginning. What exactly is Hot Shot Secret and how did it come about? Uh, well, first, thanks, John. Thanks for having us. Uh, thanks to EPAR Trade for having us. We're looking forward to this hour uh, and everybody out there that's watching, we, we encourage everyone to ask their questions. That's what we're here to do to, to answer those and hopefully educate some people on the lubrication world. That's what we like to do. Uh, to get to your question, who is Hotshot Secret and where do we come from? Uh, uh, to give you the small story, we, uh, our owner, Chris Kaprelchek, is a tribologist and uh, which I call an oil nerd. Aaron's one of our in-house oil nerds. Uh, my job is to kind of unnerd them for the average guy. But uh, years ago when the Huey injector came out from the, uh, the Ford International Motors and they were having problems with it, Chris formulated our, our staple product, product uh, Stiction Eliminator, which cleans out the oil side of a fuel injector with very unique uh, properties to it. So that kind of launched the company originally and that original product was actually called hot shot secret believe it or not uh, we have since turned that into the company name and we have a whole line of products and we've always been focused on problem solving so we don't make any commodity style products um, or lubricants at all everything that we design is designed to solve a problem or to advance technology uh, we don't release anything unless we can put the science behind it, that it can, it's the best on the market. And we test, test, test. Uh, we often test to the point where uh, we'll shelve a product if it's not uh, ready to get out into the market and, and really do its thing. So uh, we came up really through the diesel market because of that initial product, although virtually all of our oil side products are, are good for gas or diesel. Our fuel side products, you know, are specific to gas or diesel. And it was probably about four years now we've been in uh, motorsports. So we're kind of young to the motorsports arena. But as the story goes and <laughs> how uh, and, and the good reason why we have LeVon Miller on with us today is our relationship with Firepunk. And we had developed uh, one of the products we're going to talk about today, our FR3 friction reducer, uh, which has got our nano carbon technology in it that we'll dive into. But we were really just looking for some testing. 
we do a lot of lab testing. Uh, we are looking to get some dyno results on it. And to be honest, even though Firepunk Diesel is a fellow Ohioan company, uh, they're not but an hour from us. We, we gave them a call one day and said, hey, we want to uh, buy some dyno time because we don't have an in-house dyno here and we want to test the product. And the, we're good friends now, so we can look back and laugh at that original, original meeting, you know, because on their side, they said, okay, here comes another one of these snake oil companies that they're going to put some oil additive in, and we're supposed to see these gains, but hey, their money's green. If they want to buy some dyno time, by all means, come on down, and, 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 and we'll put you on the dyno. Uh, and that really birthed the, the friendship and, and, and relationship with Firepunk, because that day, uh, they really got to see some of the gains that they'd never seen before that I'm sure LeVon can attest to here when, uh, when he's speaking. And, and that, that really started it. That really got us. And, and LeVon told us, he said, heck, we've tried everything on the market. And, you know, these are guys that are at the, the pinnacle of the sport. You know, they've, uh, when it comes to all the hard parts and everything, they've, they've mastered everything and pushed everything they could to the limit. And then for an oil additive to come on and just, pull right in the motor and see right dyno results right there really changed things for them. And they really encouraged us to get into motorsports. That took us what, in about a year, about a year in development. And uh, we launched our very first uh, adrenaline racing oil an engine oil. Uh, we'd already been in the oil business, but not quite in the high performance racing oil side. And that, uh, that got us, Firepunk started using that well right away, and we said, well, heck, why stop there? And we went ahead and formulated uh, adrenaline transmission fluids and gear oils, so now we have a full line of, of racing oils, and we've really kind of dominated in diesel motorsports, and we really made some strides into uh, the gas motorsports now as, as our, our name's getting a little bigger in that arena. And here we are today, setting world records with Firepunk, and it's just been a, a few years, and Looking forward to what's coming next. Very good. And, and then I want to get into Firepunk uh, Diesel and LeVon. Uh, so uh, LeVon's uh, won three overall consecutive wins and ultimate call-out challenge. Uh, he's won several times in different classes, the uh, Outlaw Diesel Series, uh, Diesel Drag Racing, and, and Diesel Pulling. And just formidable machines and uh, a kind of race team that's always ready on race team, uh, race day, uh, ready to go, ready to win. Uh, LeVon, um, if people don't know about Firepunk Diesel, do you want to clue them in a little bit? Sure. I mean, we, we, I started out as a uh, buying a truck for my job, and as a teenager, I had the fashion for horsepower. So one thing leads to another, and you figure out how to fix and tinker and uh, we fabricated a set of twin turbos for it in my grandpa's barn, and Firepunk has kind of evolved over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, but now we, we generally specialize in just Dodge Cummins performance. Uh, that's kind of what we've got known as, and that's what we've learned how to make work power with. Uh, so if you have a Ford or a Duramax, um, we can, uh, somebody's got to get second place. So that's what, that's what, <laughs> not really, but um, it's been it's been interesting over the years as we evolve you know we're always making parts better um building engines stronger finding the failing the weakest link and then when hot shots came along you know it was uh, about four years ago and they asked these, these dyno testing and you know we already had an engine platform that we felt was strong it's about as good as you could get and then uh, instead of them coming in and testing their truck with their oil and just using the dyno they they just showed up for a dyno session with oil additives or the FR3 product. And they said, we want to use your truck. Um, and that was a, a different approach for us, definitely. And I put my 2016, which was basically a new truck then, had a fresh oil change on it, put on the dyno. And uh, we saw significant gains. I believe it was almost 20 horsepower at uh, 500 horsepower level. Um, by adding that, and I was like, man, that's too good to be true. So we put my brother's truck on it that was like 800 horsepower, and it picked up the same amount of gains. And we're like, wow, you know, this is, if I can really free up that much energy in my engine with the nanotechnology, and then there really has to be something to this oil. And that's kind of what sparked the interest for us, because it was real-world results that we could see in person 
And everything we do here at Firepunk, we want to be able to build something, sell it to a customer with proven results. That way, when uh, when they pay their bill, they know what they got at the end of the day, and we didn't just uh, sell them on a product that sounds good. That's awesome. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I've been in the racing business a long time, and I really do believe to, to sell to the, the sort of the bottom of the pyramid of the market, the, the, the enthusiasts, and just people who just want to do better with their street car. If you, if you can make it at the top of the pyramid in racing and, and be a brand at, at, within racing, I mean, that just flows down because people want to know from racers, what, what oil should I use in, in my engine? And right. so, uh, but the first thing in racing, it's not just marketing, it, it has to work. It has to be a real deal. So you, you've proven that really well uh, working with LeVon. So congratulations. And the whole race on Sunday, when on Monday thing, I, I think it still works. And then we talk about uh, nanotechnology and Aaron, I'll throw a question to you. Uh, I can say I know what nanotechnology is, but if you had me talk about it for 10 minutes, I, I, I'd soon stop making sense. I'd be making things up. So Aaron, what is nanotechnology? What are we talking about here? Well, I guess I'll make things up for 10 minutes since you won't. Uh, <laughs> uh, nano, <laughs> nanoparticles are very, very small, a billionth of a meter. So these are things that you cannot see. Um, in the engine, there are asperities, which are peaks and ridges, kind of like a mountain range. Um, the nanotechnology fills in these asperities. So instead of metal to metal contact, you get a nice smooth surface, which reduces the friction, reduces wear. Um, that's all I've got right now. <laughs> so, so it's at a very small level. So you definitely microscopic level. Um, and what do you say is as small as a nano? I don't know, a millionth of a meter? A, a millionth meter. of a meter. So it, it's hard for us to comprehend that actual size. And what a lot of people don't know, when you look at a metal surface underneath an extreme microscope like that, it, does, it, it is not two flat surfaces. It is very, very rigid. Even a brand new uh, machine motor uh, versus a, a, a motor that's got some wear on it. Um, you start to get... Uh, you know, wear, wear scars in the metal, and those voids create areas where we find a lot of uh, where friction begins. And I think we're going to bring up a uh, slide for you here, if we can. And uh, so the metal surface is, I'm not seeing it, but I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> the, it's very rigid there. And, the great part about the nanotechnology is it's so small that the, we actually use a carbon nanotechnology. So these carbon balls, uh, they're, they're cylinder round mm -hmm. in shape. They can actually fill all those microscopic voids. That's whether we're talking about an older motor that's got wear on it, or even a brand new motor out of the machining shop will have machine marks on it, mm -hmm. and it fills all those small voids. So what we try to do in the lubrication business is obviously reduce friction and reduce wear. And the, the, the flatter we can get that basis, the film layer basis to build the lubricant on, the better. Um, I'll give you one of my analogies that I like to use because <laughs> I like to dumb this stuff down for people like me that, are, that is not a tribologist. If you imagine a, a river, you can often see that there's rough edges along each, each river bank. And you'll see that the water running in the middle of the river is running quicker than the stuff by the sides. And that's because it's catching in the gullies. And that's, that's, a, that's a rough machine surface. Well, our nanotechnology will actually get into those sides of the river banks there and fill it all in to provide a flat basis on both sides. That's uh, kind of a picture, maybe a, uh, a pass-through for, for, for boats or... Um, uh, and then you're going to see the same speed of water going from edge to edge rather than the gullies that are created on each side. That's what we're doing at a microscopic level between two moving metal parts. Um, so number one, there's less ridges to break off, which are metal particles that are getting into your oil that are finding those real small voids in your tolerances. Uh, we see stuff 
at that sweet size of six to eight micron size medical metal particles that can actually just love to sit on your cylinder walls right between your rings and cylinder walls and really create some wear uh, which allows you know your rings not to seat as well you lose you lose power that way you, you start to wear down the motor so the less of those metal particles that we can break off the better and that's how we uh, protect the sides of two pieces of metal and secondly when that oil flow is passing through rather than it just moving through very quickly in the middle uh, we're actually passing oil through a lot quicker so that allows it to the, the heat reduction to come down considerably so that's, those are two of the biggest things we see right away when people are using our, our carbon nanotechnology is a, is a reduction in the wear most importantly and then also we see a lot of heat reduction and the heat reduction comes in a couple ways <laughs> one of the unique parts yeah. is obviously the reduction in friction is going to bring the heat down but one of our and i which i get to punt back to aaron one of the uh, patented technologies we have and what makes our company unique that's actually what the three in is the fr3 people wonder that the three is uh, three different patents that we have on it a lot of people have uh, are, are toying with nanotechnology particularly carbon nanotechnology but it is very difficult to keep it in suspension so you're going to have a lot that just falls and will settle to the bottom of a bottle or bottom of your motor. So we have cracked that code. And I guess you could say it's one of our secrets. <laughs> There's your fun for the day. But that allows, uh, we can actually keep the carbon suspended throughout the oil. So not mm. only is it gonna bond to all the metal surfaces to protect it, it'll stay suspended in the oil as well. And carbon is a natural conductor of heat. Right. So not only are we reducing heat by reducing the wear of the two metal surfaces, the carbon inside the oil itself is actually extracting heat from the oil. So uh, it allows us to get, bring temperatures down. The improvements like Levon was mentioning that we see on the dyno with power improvements, that's just a byproduct. We're happy to, we, to, when we hear that. Uh, a lot of people are looking for horsepower. A lot of the guys we work with are, I, I mean, Levon, these guys are at 3,000 plus horsepower. They got more horsepower than they need. Um, I know uh, Bill Lutz just put down over 3,000 horsepower. These guys are never going to use that much horsepower. So, you know, another 30 horsepower to them is like unusable. What we really pride ourselves in is protecting these motors. And that extra power is just a byproduct of uh, freeing up the energy by protecting the motor. We love that byproduct. We all do. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're addressing this uh, in depth technically. You know, uh, one of you mentioned the uh, whole issue of snake oil, and, and that's an old thing in racing. And it had been dealt with racing since before I came into the racing industry. So it's just an ancient thing, but it just doesn't last very long in racing. You know, racing is a real word of mouth business, and, and we all kind of gather together every weekend and talk to each other in the pits. So it really has to, to prove itself out there on the racetrack, and, and that's what Levon is doing. Um, and Aaron, how does the formulation process work in the lab when designing a new lubricant? What's involved there? Wow. Um, we, we like to source ingredients that are not well known. A lot of new and upcoming products from like the uh, STLE shows, the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers. Uh, so not we're not stuck in the little catalogs that a lot of lubricant manufacturers are we actually go out and search for new and unique uh, products and bring them back to the lab and test and test and test and, and test and test and, and test. test yeah and that's that's the beginning is typically finding unique products that everyone else isn't using um, then the formulation process from there is compatibility with other products and on and on and on and testing 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 and we usually come up with some pretty unique offerings. Um, there's not a whole lot like us anywhere. <laughs> they, they spend a lot of time in the lab uh, testing. And, and, and what's unique about it is uh, the synergy that happens with a lot of these right. compounds. That Since a lot 100%. of them are new, these guys love to find really strange new stuff that's never been used before. And mixing it with different stuff, a lot of it's... We're not going to lie. It's just guessing. It's, <laughs> well, it's, that's it's, a little, come on. That's a little too much. Okay. <laughs> but they like to um, experiment with new, new compounds because what's unique about tribology is 
one plus one doesn't always equal two. There's a synergy that happens when you mix chemicals. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's really exciting when they find something new that just blows our socks off when we see the results. Mm -hmm. uh, but it takes a lot of, a lot of lab time. Okay. And then the, again, I want everybody to ask questions. So at the bottom of the Zoom screen is a chat option. Just open it up and, and, and write out um, kind of your question and then we'll get to the panelists. I have one note already, just again, the volume control, it, it, it went up and we could hear you for a while and it seemed to have uh, gone down a bit. So we'll keep working on that. And then uh, when it comes to the, the diesel market within racing, you know, there's, there's people in racing in different segments of racing and they know all about their segment, but they don't know what's happening in the other segment. Right. And the, the diesel, diesel racing uh, has really just blossomed, continues to blossom, continues to be active. And, and LaVon, why don't you tell people, if they're not familiar with all the diesel competition, which is really serious, radical stuff going on, uh, tell them what's going on out there. Well, yes, the diesel industry has grown exponentially. And for sure, on a professional level, the race teams have gone from, you know, 10 years ago, it was everybody uh, unhooking their landscape trailer and driving to a weekend event, and they would take a shot at the drag strip and run a 13 second pass. And it was awesome. I mean, that was me in 2005. I took my 2001 out there and I ran a 14.2 in the quarter mile and I was hooked. Like I thought it was absolutely awesome and I had to have more. Um, but as time has evolved, now you show up at like an Outlaw Diesel Super Series event. Uh, you're going to see a host of pro racers, people coming in with uh, nice trucks and trailers and, and actual dedicated race trucks. And well, really, the diesel engine, uh, you look at it's heavier than most uh, comparable gas engines. But we can, we can, like if you go take a 3,000 horsepower diesel to an NHRA race and run top sportsman, we'll use less than a gallon of diesel fuel in a pass where the guy beside you might run, you know, 15 gallons of alcohol in one pass. So we're really, it is a fuel efficient platform for racing and we don't have near the between round maintenance uh, like the S10 uh, that we race in ProMod, which is ProMod in the diesel world. Um, that can make, we made 3,214 horsepower on the engine dyno. Uh, on the track, we've made a peak around 3,000 horsepower. We haven't figured out how to harness all that power yet. Um, but we were able to go 99 passes this summer uh, without pulling the head. I mean, it was really, you change your oil, uh, top off fuel, check tire pressures, look at your data logs, make adjustments, and go make another pass. So it has come a long way to where we can have an engine that is reliable enough to make pass after pass at that kind of power level. Uh, that's how it's involved a lot and we're, you know, working with guys like Hot Shots, being there an hour from us, having a lubrication um, specialist that can listen to your needs and we can show them the data. Like back, back in the day, we'd struggle with, you know, you get a couple passes in, you start picking up crankcase pressure and then you change your oil and crankcase pressure would go back down. A lot of the products with Hot Shots has fixed a lot of those problems because the oil's not breaking down. They're using a better base oil, and it really has evolved the sport a lot. Very cool. And then we're getting some questions now, so I'll just throw them over to you. Uh, Kyle, I'll start with you. This is from Rick's Garage. Is the FR3 recommended in street performance engines, uh, muscle cars, and cars using high-octane fuels? Kyle? Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, FR3 is is really our, our, our we call our magic sauce around here because we can't find an application that's not good for it. It goes in, we infuse FR3 into every one of our oils that we put out. And that's from our group two, group three blends up to our group three synthetics, up to our group four uh, PAO, polyalpha olefins, our top level oils. It goes in all of our transmission fluids. It goes in our gear oils. Uh, we I often tell people if you're, we know people are very oil loyal. Uh, we talk about that all the time. So if you're oil loyal, I always challenge people, keep your oil, give FR3 a try, and you'll see the gains that we can, we can make on the oil that you're using. We see a 42% wear reduction in any host oil that we add FR3 to. So uh, it's a good first step. And I always tell people, if you have a little extra in the bottle, there's a lot more it can go to. Uh, we use FR3 in hydraulic systems, any closed system. So 
Um, a little bit in your uh, power steering goes a long way. Uh, we, we use it in gears, transmission, you name it. So there is not an oil application that you really can't use uh, FR3 in. Okay, very cool. And then this is from uh, Bill Vinton uh, for either uh, Aaron or Kyle. Would DLC coatings complement your product? Have you tested with DLC components? So diamond like coatings, uh, does, it, does it work right. with that? Any issues? There's, there are no issues. Uh, we have n not, we don't have a, a large variety of data from testing with the diamond like coatings, but everything that we've done has been positive as well. Okay. So. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Is your oil certified by the API? No, it is not. Uh, the API certification, the testing alone for each and every individual oil is almost $200,000. So for each one of our oils, we would have to do that for us. And the adrenaline, adrenaline oils are racing oils anyway, so they don't really need to meet any API certification. Uh, we do meet the, cert, uh, the specifications for API, but we do not have them tested, mostly because the PAO oils um, are, not, are not certified themselves. So that adds another step in expense, so. And, and to speak to that uh, <clears throat> shortly, that's, that's often where we kind of separate ourselves on uh, the type of products we're bringing to market. Specifically, all of our adrenaline race oils are full PAO group fours. Um, to, to run through that quickly, just give a little oil education to people that may not know. Uh, a group two oil is, is, your, is a conventional oil. That is the 1995 quick lube oil change that you're going to see down the street. Uh, that's a very, not far from a barrel of oil. It's, it hasn't been refined too much. Uh, that type of oil can shear very quickly. That's why you have very short intervals you know with that type of oil the next level up is a group three oil which is loosely called switch to a mic is that better for you folks a little bit better yeah okay <laughs> so a group three oil is uh that's a lot better no it's a lot better good a lot better great is 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 what we is what's considered a synthetic oil although it's not fully a synthetic oil but Everything you see on the shelf, which is a long story, went down to a court case <laughs> years ago, and the government did not want to get into de deciphering what oil is, is. They said, you guys call it what you will. So to this day, people call it synthetic oil, even though it's still not too far from a barrel of oil. A group four oil is a polyalpha olefin. This is a truly man-made oil, and that's, that's what we use for all of our high-end oils. Uh, there's some great properties to it, which... We'll talk a little bit about the build of a, of a racing oil. Uh, but to speak to what Aaron was speaking about, the group four PAOs are not even in the API um, realm there. So they don't in, get- In the diesel world, especially. Right, yeah. especially in the diesel world. So those, those don't even, they're, they're just on a different chart. But that's kind of where we live. We kind of live in the, the niche world where we're look, making very specific products for, for you know, specific you know, results. Okay. Here's another question from the audience. I, I know you said that you do not have general products, but do you have and sell oils that could be used with a generally uh, customized NASCAR V8 engines? Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I would recommend our adrenaline race oil for that. Generally speaking, when you're looking at uh, what type of oil to run, we're if pretty much the deciding factor at the, at the front part. The first why in the road comes down to the emission systems. So if it's a street car that's got catalytic converters or the DPF systems that we see on diesel vehicles, uh, you're going to be limited by what kind of additive package that you can put in there. Um, but when you open it up to a NASCAR engine or, an, you know, an open exhaust type of performance engine, that allows guys like Aaron to play and they get to have fun and they get to load it with really good stuff in, in, in those additive packages and, and, and really let them rip and, and, re, and really, you know, protect them with those motors. Good answer. And then we have a, a really good question that I want to make sure we ask that in this hour. Um, what do you do to set – are you looking for dealers? And, and, and do you want to describe it if somebody's out there? Because this is our audience. And, and if they want to become dealers, what's involved with that? Yeah, we're always looking for new dealers. It's – 
we really like our, our, our direct side of our business where we work very closely with independent dealers nationwide. And what's unique to that is we have a, we have a big retail presence now where we're in over 30,000 stores nationwide from all your truck stops to tractor supplies and, you know, all your auto parts stores from uh, O'Reilly's to AutoZone, et cetera. But in the retail world, uh, it's, it's very tough. They, they, it's tough to get products in. It takes a while. What's very unique to our direct side of the business is our independent dealers have full access to our entire product catalog, and they're often right. the first to get them. Uh, we do a lot of testing with our dealers. We do uh, a lot of support. One thing that uh, we, how we support Firepunk a lot with is our oil analysis. So we love to analyze oil. That's really tells us everything. And there's a lot of guessing until you get to analyzing. So a partnership with Hotshot Secret on a dealer side, we really try to take it to another level, not just be a oil provider or a product provider as an extra revenue stream for your business, but we really like to partner closely, educate our dealers on lubrication, find out what their specific needs needs are and how their businesses operate. And then we support them with, with testing and, and, and really uh, bringing, bringing new products to market. That's where we get a lot of our ideas. They challenge us all the time. I'll give you one quick example <laughs> is uh, one of our, one of our latest products that we just brought out was a, was our G56 transmission fluid. Okay. And the G56 transmission is a very finicky transmission that the manufacturer uh, just decided they were not going to make a transmission fluid for. It's a manual transmission found in a lot of Dodge trucks and they just don't build enough to, for the manufacturer to say, I, we need every Dodge dealer nationwide to carry this oil in case one of these trucks shows up and needs service. So they said, ah, just put ATF plus four in it and you're good. Well, every one of these guys that has one of these trucks knows that, that, that they have a problem. They're, they're noisy, they're hot. Um, well, that opens up a market for us. Our dealers come to us and say, hey, I work on a lot of these trucks and can you guys come up with something better than what the manufacturer's doing? And Aaron was working on G56 for how long? It, it was over a year. Over a year, but we just brought with, it to market. With all the testing. Right. So and, we just brought it to tweaks. market, and, and yeah. it's, it's a unique fluid, and that's what we do. We live in this niche world where we can actually custom formulate something that's – we know it's not a big audience. It's not big enough for, for you know, Dodge to deal with, but uh, we'll put that product out there. And now our dealers that originally brought us that problem – now have a product to offer directly to their customers and solve the issues that they're, they're dealing with. That's great. So you and didn't answer the question of how to sign up for the dealership. Oh, how do you sign up for the dealership? Yeah, give us a call. We have a, you can go to our website. Uh, we have a button that says become a dealer, I believe it's called. Uh, or you can call in uh, anytime. We have account executives here that, uh, that can show you all our packages, bring you on board and uh, get you all set up with, a nice display and everything like Levon has down there at Firepunk. Uh, he's one of our dealers as well, which makes our whole circle work. And uh, uh, yeah, we're always looking for dealers nationwide. So just give us a call and we'll, we'll tell you how we can get you set up. At Epar Trade, uh, we, we still love uh, the bricks and mortar stores. I, I know it sounds uh, old fashioned, but uh, the, the little race shop uh, in town is really an ally with the racers because they know what works at the local racetrack. And so I, I think there is a real opportunity here, both for Hot Shot Secret and for uh, uh, racing dealers, little racing retail stores to uh, put your racing products on the shelves and, and put out something new and something that's working. And then um, also Hot Shot Secret, I, I believe, is becoming more and more involved in, in sponsoring race events. Is that right, Kyle? Yeah, we, uh, we like I said, we've only been head into – Motorsports for about four years now. We we started off uh, in the diesel area. We title sponsored the NHRDA, uh, which is no longer, um, as well as the Pro Street sponsor, uh, class sponsor of the Outlaw Diesel Super Series, uh, which just keeps growing each and every year. These guys are breaking records each and every year. I think we, I think we logged uh, twelve world records set in the past in the past year just with our drivers running our fluids. Um, throughout the uh, throughout the diesel you know industry, so it's really uh, meeting that peak. And now we have 
We're stretching it into the gas world. We have a lot of, lot of support from everything from big money bracket racing uh, to, you know, heads up. We're, getting, we're, we're loving this 275 and this radial stuff that's going on now. And um, we're, we're, we're really deep into the no prep scene now. A lot of the no prep guys are, are really picking it up. And uh, that kind of started with a lot of the, the, the street outlaws. A lot of the Memphis street outlaws use all our oil. And that kind of got us into that whole scene. And it grew from there. So I can't think of a type of racing that we're not in now. Um, we're not a giant company that can sponsor everything, but uh, what we just like supporting our independent dealers. We love to support our drivers from us differently than your average sponsor uh, where we want to make sure we keep their vehicles running all year. Um, so doing oil analysis for our drivers is, is, is that big first step. And, you know, as, as Levon mentioned to have a, um, a one-off motor that they have in the S10 that's the world's fastest diesel truck and uh, a, a beautiful billet motor from D&J Precision prototype, the only one in the world. And we debuted it this year and we didn't miss a race. We had on the track the whole year and 99 passes, made it through the whole season. And now we're going to open it up and uh, peek inside and uh, we've already seen some good things. So uh, our sponsorships will continue to grow. <clears throat> But that's very cool. I mean, we're seeing several levels of the company, and it's really great to see the technical expertise behind it, uh, to see the passion behind it, to see the, sport, uh, the support of the sport behind it. So this is really a, a, a multi-dimensional effort that's going on uh, to, to market the product in racing, and, and you're successful now, and I, I predict just continued success in the future when it comes to racing. And then here's the famous question. Uh, LaVon, do you use the products in your daily driver? Absolutely. That's the biggest thing. I mean, I, what I've seen with racing oil, if it's going to hold up in a 3,000 horsepower application, it's going to be an even better application for something that I'm going to put a lot of street miles on. So I have a, bought a 2019 truck last year and actually used their uh, Blue Diamond. That's their top grade PAO oil. Um, that I run in it, and I have run, I've been on the same oil change for 18,000 miles now. Uh, I have a, uh, the France filter where we're, where we're cleaning the oil, we're just doing oil analysis periodically, making sure the TDM levels are good, um, but it is something that we use in the truck I drive every day. I use it in the RV that we tow, uh, the stacker trailer with the race truck to it. I keep it in my I've got another street truck that makes about 14 or 1500 horsepower I run it in there. Uh, pretty much it's infiltrated into every vehicle we drive. Very good. That's the right answer, huh? <laughs> now, I'll take I will say too, I wanted to touch on, on hot shots, um, supporting the diesel industry. I think that was, that was a big thing for us at Firepunk because you do, you see, you see so many companies come in and they can have uh, a, a nice fancy, a marketing ploy, but Hot Shots is actually out there. Kyle is going to tons of different events. It doesn't just have to be Kyle, but Hot Shots is supporting these people. So if you're if you're looking to become a dealer, uh, not only can you sell the product, but they're there. They genuinely care. They want to have the best product. And so if they find something that is better, they're going to work and work very hard until they find something and develop something that's better for you um for the end user right and, and then uh kyle if somebody wants to buy the product to test at the racetracks is there somebody special they should contact or, or how, how should they handle that well we <laughs> sell everything online as well so you can get all of our products at hotshotsecret.com uh, the racing side of things are our, our adrenaline products are not something you're going to really find in retail simply because and i'll be frank we don't make anything off our, <laughs> our racing products. They, we, we threw the kitchen sink and then some at the, at these products. So we have very little margin, which, you know, the big retailers need a lot of margin on their products to get them in there. You're not going to see them there, but our independent dealers have full access to them as well. So I recommend you go to our website, hotshotsecret.com. They're all available there. You can also punch in your zip code on our website and find an independent dealer near you. Um, and, uh, and it'll show who's out there and what they're carrying. And maybe, you know, you might have a speed shop near you that's already carrying the product. Okay. Very good. 
And then here's a, a question from our friend at 66 Savage Restoration Speed Shop. I'll just read it. Uh, are your oils for dirt track based 602, 604 crate modified and super late models? And also, could it be used in methanol burners such as mud bog trucks? Uh, his shop specializes in building these kind of cars and trucks, uh, small and big block engines. You know me? Okay, sure. <clears throat> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, how's that? Uh, depending on your clearances and the recommended oil weights, we have a full line of adrenaline from 20 weight up to the 60 plus alky, which would work in the methanol. So we do have oils for every application. Okay. And then Aaron also, you know, as a technical guy, do you see people making mistakes over and over in racing uh, when it comes to the oils? Um, is it something out there is like, you know, I see this all the time. Stop doing that. Wow. That's a, aside from not choosing our oil. Yeah. Um, uh, no, there's, there's a lot of really good oils out there. I'm not going to try to lie about that, but um there are there are a few that are that break down considerably and ours are the pao base stays in grade longer and will help protect it for 99 passes yeah yeah for sure and i also think the one of the biggest mistakes i see also a couple of things number one technology technology is changing very quickly in this industry so um I hear a lot of people say, well, my daddy's dad used that oil, you know, and I've used it. Well, if you, if you haven't popped your head up in the last even three to four years to check uh, what's going on in the lubricant industry with some of the new chemicals we're using, you're, you're probably getting passed by. Um, and secondly, the biggest mistake I see people do is not test their oil. Uh, oil analysis is priceless. Uh, we do it here at, 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 at Hot Shots. Uh, at cost. We don't make any money off of it. You can get a standard oil test done for $20. We even ship you the return mailer, postage paid with the bottle and everything. It's, it is the best insurance you can do to your motor, especially um, a high performance racing engine. There's, if you haven't taken, it, it's like taking a blood test. We can find, we spot issues before they happen. I can't tell you how many engines we've saved when we will spot some, uh, some water in there and you know check your head gasket you know before it blows and uh there's a lot of things that we can spot so i, I see a lot of people that are not taking that extra step and doing the analysis side whereas you know they'll work on the hard parts they'll they'll they'll, they'll twist their turbos up and, uh, and their nitrous applications as much as they can and won't spend 20 bucks on an analysis so uh that's that's the number one thing i would tell people to do is is really get on a on a good uh, program where you're regularly analyzing your oils and uh, it'll, t it'll tell you a lot. Uh, very good. That, that's actually come up several times in our ePart Trade live webinars, the idea of regular use of oil analysis. Um, and, and then when it comes to oil and the idea of updating oil and staying current, it's like people wouldn't use the same cylinder head from 10 years ago just because they're, they're loyal to that one cylinder head product. You know, and oil is just like a part, you know, you, you just have to stay current or you're going to kind of start drifting towards uh, the back of the grid. And, and then when this pandemic hit, uh, Kyle, uh, w one thing that Hot Shot Secret did is, is make hand sanitizer available. And, and there's a time where you couldn't get hand sanitizer at the beginning of the pandemic. So I, I welcome that. Just real briefly, do you want to mention that? Sure, I've got some right here. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, it's all over the place here. So uh we we're just in a unique position where we we have bottling lines we've got chemists we've got uh the ability to do it and so when it first when it all first started to break uh chris our owner said you know let's let's make up i think we did two or three hundred gallons yeah. i think a, a couple hundred gallons <laughs> right. that's funny and we're now. going to donate it to uh our local firefighters our, our hospitals our first responders um, just as a goodwill gesture to help our support our community. We're, we're headquartered in Mount Gilead, Ohio, which kind of farm country. We're just north of Columbus, but uh, we, we're, we're really big in supporting our, our local community here. And after all that product kind of got out, um, we started getting calls back saying, I want to reopen my business and, and I could use some, we're happy to purchase some. We started getting national calls and 
So we looked at it as an opportunity and next thing you know, man, we turned on the switches and we went from a couple hundred gallons to hundreds of thousands of gallons. And uh, we, we just, we, we have everything registered with the EPA and the um, CDC and FDA or whatever they all, all those additions <laughs> and uh, got, the, got the plant uh, ready for it. Just turn over some more bottling lines dedicated directly to it. And um, I even, w one opportunity we had also that it, to speak to the racing community is we put out a, uh, I do a lot of the, the, the tracks were trying to open, but they were being challenged by their local health boards and, you know, to make it sure it was safe to open. So uh, we do, uh, we, we do a special uh, offerings for any racetrack nationwide and we still honor that today. So if there's any racetracks out there that are in need of hand sanitizer, um, they can reach out to us directly. We give them special pricing on it because we really want to support the, the racing community nationwide and uh, make sure that we can safely open all these tracks and uh, keep these keep these guys going up and down the tracks is what we'd like to see. Thank you. I, I remember distinctly my time walking into a, a drugstore looking for hand sanitizer and there wasn't any. So I, I, I really appreciate that. When I saw uh, that you came out with it, I thought, thank you. You know, thank you. And, and then, uh, LeVon, when it comes to racing this year uh, during the pandemic, um, what did you see outside and all, all out there? I mean, and also in terms of, of your customers coming to uh, bring you cars and projects and everything, what was it like in this year of the pandemic? Well, it was definitely different, and it was the hardest because you didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, so we did, have, uh, we did have a couple of our races canceled. Uh, we actually fire punk host one of the uh, uh, point races and we had to cancel that event just because we weren't able to have enough spectators and financially there's no way that you can rent a track and pay an organization and, and host the race. Um, it's basically financial suicide for that, but we did get uh, five points races in and generally the, the uh, attendance was a little lower just because everybody had to take precautions with uh, gatherings, you know, social gatherings and such. But as far as the business wise, we actually saw a significant increase in our call volume. Our call volume was in, incredibly high all summer long. I think, you know, you take sports out of the equation, you know, their kids weren't, they weren't going out to eat, they weren't going out to bars, they, they had, and most of our customers are still out working and they were taking her with their trucks. So a lot of guys were, were taking this summer to spend the time out in the shop or in the garage and put parts on their truck and make it bigger and better and faster. So it's, we've been extremely blessed to be as busy as we are and it's been a good, good year for us. Well, that's good to hear. And, you know, I, I, the racing industry has many unique qualities. And, and one of them is uh, they just tend to have the best consumer of, of, of any industry. And uh, th these guys don't hear that there's a pandemic and, and give up. I mean, they, they're the opposite. They, they hear there's a pandemic. And how can I get around this? How can I get over it? How can I get on top of it? You know, they, they take it as a challenge and something to beat, something to defeat. And we've heard that also in uh, our EPAR Trade Live webinars, that uh, the, the cars are rolling, but even when they ha weren't rolling, uh, the, the guys are spending the time to catch up with some of the things they always want to do to their car. So uh, I appreciate being in this pandemic in this industry, just because of the kind of people uh, we have here and uh, they just don't give up. They rise to the challenge. Um, uh, Kyle, uh, looking ahead, is there things in the future that you want to talk about when it comes to hot shot secret? Well, that's the crazy <laughs> thing about this place is we never know what's ahead there. Um, we can peek inside R and D and see what they're up to, but we always try to stay ahead of the game and, um, innovate, uh, our parent company, LSI, uh, trade trademark is where innovation lives. And, and then of course our trademark for hot shot secret is powered by science. So you put the two of them together and we're, we're, we're always looking to bring new products to market. Um, one unique thing I'll challenge everybody out there to is if you're having any lubrication issue at all, we love that stuff. That's that feeds us. So give us a call you can get right on the phone with one of our tribologists and, and if we find it a challenge, we will, we'll go into the lab 
and try to find a solution for it. That's, that's how our company continues to grow. And we're looking at a new uh, building expansion this year, which is going to allow us to uh, produce, you know, more product. It's going to allow our R and D to grow. So we have a lot of growth personally here at our operation, which is just going to really allow our, our science to expand as well. So I'm looking forward to the future. I, I, I don't know where it's going. Um, I know our patents are locked on this nanotechnology, so that's good. We'll be continue to run with that, but I never, I, I will never try to guess what's next for this company because it, it always exceeds my expectations. And um, I'm sure you'll see some big things from us uh, in the next year for sure. I love it. Uh, yeah, I agree. A very, a very dynamic uh, company, a lot going on there. And LeVon, when you're looking ahead for uh, Firepunk Diesel, is, are there any plans and, and ideas for the future that you wanted to share? Well, um, we're definitely continuing to grow. We're going to try to uh, capitalize on some of our specialty items with our fabrication. Uh, we do a lot of in-house fabrication with custom builds and it's hard because there's a big need. You know, a lot of guys don't have a TIG welder in their garage that they can do a custom exhaust or a custom turbo setup. So we're always looking in the future of how can we put in production more pieces that we can build and ship out nationwide for the customers that are wanting to assemble a truck in their garage, but they need some of these custom pieces. So we're always just keeping us on our toes, seeing what's uh, the next thing that we can provide to the diesel industry. Because we, again, we want to be out there and we want to support the industry that we're working in. Very good. Okay, we're, we're, we're coming up to the hour and, and we try to keep the EPAR trade live to an, uh, an hour so everyone can get back to work and don't take up the whole day. I could talk for another hour uh, with you guys, but we, we just try to uh, bring it to an end. Um, Kyle, uh, do you want to kind of wrap up uh, as far as uh, Hot Shot Secret and, and leave us with kind of a parting thought? Well, first of all, thanks for having us. Uh, it was a good time. I will stay another hour if you want. I don't have to go back to my desk then. So uh, let's do this again sometime. I, uh, we, we, we thank you for having us here. And I uh, want to publicly thank LaVon and Firepunk for all they do for us. It's, it's amazing to have uh, a group like Firepunk that is at the pinnacle of the industry, yet they let us play with their very expensive toys. <laughs> And, uh, and, and test to get a lot of new products out there. So what's very unique about what we release for your everyday driving vehicle out there, uh, you can rest assured that it's been tested in the most extreme environment. And it takes partnerships like the one between Hot Shot Secret and Firepunk to, to really get that done and to get you know, high-end products to the market. So um, we want to thank Firepunk for that. And, uh, and we're looking forward to what's next. I know... We're chasing a chasing a big number. That's that uh, when it comes down to diesel drag racing, and we're right on the edge of it. So uh, we're going to keep keep our head down and keep working hard, as I know Firepunk will. And we look forward to a big racing season uh, coming up in 2021. Very good. And then I want people to know that uh, you know, again, the EPAR trade, uh, what we do and what we're about. Uh, there's a technical paper from Hot Shot Secret on EPAR trade. So when it comes to the FR3 product. You can uh, go through it and see the dyno test results, uh, you know, from Levon's shop. So uh, that's what EPAR Trade is all about. It's, it's new products, popular products, racing only. But then we have technical papers, technical videos, all sorts of stuff. So it, it's a fun place to go. And then what happens with EPAR Trade is that when a company like Hot Shot Secret uploads a, a new company, that they, a new product that they want to show off, it automatically goes to the homepage of EPAR Trade. So in your morning cup of coffee, it's, it's worthwhile just to kind of check in with EPAR Trade and that front screen, just kind of see what's kind of brand new really today. What's brand new today? You can find that every day in uh, EPAR Trade. So thank you very much, guys. This has been informative, a really interesting company. And one of the things I like about my position here is that I, I get a perspective of the whole racing industry. And it's fun to see companies come in and, and how they do things and how they adjust and and uh, it's really great to see a company with energy, expertise, and, and really creativity come into the industry and do so well. We're glad you're part of EPAR Trade. Uh, Online Race Industry Week, get your registration now. Don't wait till two minutes before we start. Uh, so get it now, uh, spread the word. It, it's a big industry event. And uh, we're really happy to work with racer.com to put together speakers uh, on the, at the level of Roger Penske and 
Bobby Rahal, Chip Ganassi, Brian Herta, all those guys. So it's going to be fun. Uh, be there. It'll be uh, like a cable TV network just for the racing industry. So we're going to have fun. All right. Thank you very much. And this will conclude this episode of ePortrait Live.